Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Everton. This is the beginning of season two and this episode we're going to be talking about lots of transfer business because basically we've sold 101 million pounds worth of players and we've spent 66 million pounds rejuvenating the squad. So that's how I want to put it. Probably not rejuvenating, probably weakening the squad. Let's jump straight in then to the big names that are leaving the club. First up then is Lucas Digne. The French left back has left the club signing for Arsenal. £50 million. I was trying to get £60 million out of them. They wouldn't go any higher. We do have, I think, you see a 15 or 20% uh, future sale. So if he leaves in a year or two's time, we get a huge chunk of that. Not profit, actual just sale value. He was a bit annoyed at the end of the season. PSG putting an offer. I rejected it. He wanted to go to PSG and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to be able to keep you about. I can probably shift you on for a big number and then replace him. I hope I've replaced him. The next big name to leave is Sandro. I say big name. He didn't play for us. He's out on loan at uh, Valladolid apparently last season. He signed for Aston Villa for £22 million. That's a lot of money. Didn't think I'd get anywhere near that amount for him. Morgan Schneidlin is next up to leave, signing for Norwich for just under £10 million. He was getting paid way, way too much money, so I think we're actually paying probably £60,000 a week of his salary just to get him off the books. We've absolutely had Burnley with this one. John Joe Kenny has left the club, spent last season out on loan at Schalke, playing 28 games, actually scoring a couple of goals, but he signed for Burnley for £8 million in the Championship. They spent £8 million on a 23-year-old English right-back who, he's okay, he's not terrible, he's actually not a bad option, but £8 million is way too much money for him. Next up to leave is Kieran Dowell, the 22-year-old English attacking midfielder who has signed for Huddersfield for £4.4 million, which again, is a lot of money for someone who, if I'm perfectly honest, isn't, isn't good enough. He's not bad, he's not a bad player, he's just not good enough for us. He joined in January and then left in August. It is Danilo Cataldi. He has left and signed for Livorno. I think we got about three and a bit million pounds for him. Um, didn't play a single game for us. There you go. Bought him for 800k. Sold him for three million. That's actually not a bad deal. This one, however, is not a good deal. You probably noticed we're going down in value. Theo Walcott has left the club signing for FC Copenhagen. He's gone for 2.9 million pounds. I don't think the board are particularly pleased with this one because he was worth about 14 million when we tried to sell him. He was getting paid far too much money and just not playing for us. So I tried to shift him on for as much money as possible. Turns out it wasn't a lot of money. Matthew Pennington has also left the club, spent last season out on loan at Hull. He's signed for Rotherham for some money, 400,000 pounds. There you go. Some guy called Kyle John has also signed for Bristol City for 200 and something thousand pounds. We were never going to play him. For 220 thousand pounds, Jonathan Anderson, the Nigerian left back, has signed for Hull. Again, never going to play him. Fraser Hornby has gone and signed for Bournemouth for some reason for, I don't know, about 200k, something like that. Again, never going to play him. And Luke Garbutt has left the club and signed for Charlton on a free transfer. A few other players as well who were released at the end of the season as well. Cuca Martino, who's found a new club at Deportivo La Coruña. Matty Folds, who hasn't managed to pick up a contract anywhere just yet. Umar Niasse, who has now gone and signed for Galatasaray. And Leighton Baines, retired at the end of the season, who's now become an assistant manager, who's an absolutely shocking assistant manager. Speaking of assistant managers, uh, yeah, Luis Boamorte, no longer here. He has been replaced. With this guy, it is Peter Elstrup, a 57-year-old Danish assistant manager I guess I nearly said international he's never played international football by the looks of his career he's never played football he's been an assistant manager head of youth development and a caretaker manager at Randers in Denmark he's joining us as an assistant manager he's bloody good as an assistant manager that 20 working with youngsters I don't know how much it helps him probably not a lot but I like having someone who's really good with youngsters Joining the club then, the first of 12 players to join the club, 11 of them on permanent deals, one of them a loan deal. It is Rodell Richards. He signed from Tottenham Hotspur on a free transfer and immediately gone out on loan to Skybet League 2 side Port Vale. I didn't do anything. I didn't do any of this. It was my head of youth development. He picked him up. I think he's probably got some decent potential, so I'm not too fussed about it. Also joining the club on a free transfer is Belgian goalkeeper Colin Koosmans, formerly of AA Ghent. I've brought him in. He's not the best but I've brought him in because when our two goalkeepers get injured, I'd like to have someone who's all right in goal as opposed to an 18-year-old American who's actually really bad. So, yeah, Colin Koosman, he's, he's okay, two-star current ability. He's not going to get much better, but he is as, he's in as a backup. So I think he's okay for a free transfer. 
Another free transfer to join the club is Paolo Giglione, possibly. He signed from Genoa. His contract was up at the end of the season. He's not cost a single penny to sign, but he has damaged his cruciate ligaments. I signed him back in January, and then he got himself injured in sort of March time and hasn't actually played football since. I don't think he played a lot for Genoa either. Again, he's come in as a backup option. He's a right back, which is something that we kind of need some backups for Digital Sidibi. Spoiler, he's joined the club on a permanent deal. But yes, Paolo is going to be here, probably not playing a huge amount of football. Probably get sold in the summer. Next up, signing from Ghent or Genk, one of the two uh, Belgian sides, is Kosovan left winger, who can also play on the right wing and as a striker, Iron Zegrova. He doesn't have a work permit, so he's already gone out on loan to Spain. I'm hoping, because I think at the end of this current season, season two, we're going to have our Brexit. I think we've had a bit of news already. It doesn't actually kick in until later on down the line. Once Brexit happens, we'll be able to play him because we've got the, the £8,000 a week deal. So anyone who's non-English or non-British, I guess, can play as long as they're getting paid £8,000 a week. He's getting paid nearly 15. He'll be fine. His current ability is only two star, but his potential is about four to five star. So I think because he's only 21, we're probably going to at least make some money for him. That's all I've really wanted him for. He's a free transfer. If he gets good, he gets good. Otherwise, we shift him on for like seven, eight, nine million, something like that. Decent bit of profit. Next up through the door was originally planned as a backup for uh, old Lucas Dinja. But now... As Lucas Digne has left the club on a permanent deal, he might play a bit more football. It is Jordan Amavi, formerly of Aston Villa. He's signed for £5 million. He's come in, as I said, he's going to be a backup. He's in as a squad player. Two and a half star current ability. Three star potential. He's all right. He's not amazing. He'll do a job as and when we need him. He can play basically anywhere up that left-hand side as well. So if we need a left-back or a wing-back, he can do both jobs. Starting to get into some big money now. Signing from Feyenoord is 23-year-old Argentine central defender Marcos Senesi. It has cost us £9.25 million to pry this man away from the Eredivisie. But I think for that money, we've got ourselves a very good footballer. Three and a half star current ability, four star potential, natural ball playing defender. He can also play as a natural libero, which... I don't play liberos, I don't think I've ever played liberos, but maybe one day we might start doing that. I think Marcos Senesi is going to be a great signing for us, particularly better than Yerry Mina, because Yerry Mina hasn't been a good ball-playing defender. For £10.25 million, joining the club from Dinamo is 23-year-old Bosnian central midfielder Amir Gojak. I have signed him for one reason only and that is his mental stats. He has got some wonderful mental stats. Actually, his physical stats are pretty good as well. So he's got composure of 17, determination 17, work rate of 16, teamwork's also up there as a 15, a few 14s as well, and off the ball, concentration, bravery, and aggression. Physical as well, natural fitness, stamina, and strength, all 16. He's also not terrible technically. He's 23 years old, he's three-star current ability, he's three and a half star potential, so maybe a little bit of room to grow. He's probably not gonna be playing every week, but he'll probably get enough football that he hopefully he will hopefully turn into a slightly better footballer. Now, this player is the Lucas Digne full-time replacement. It's not Jordan Amvi. It is Brazilian left-back Dodo, or Dodu. I don't know. Like He's got a weird like apostrophe thing above the second O in his name. Anyway, the 28-year-old has signed from Sampdoria, who signed him at the start of the season, maybe, for £4.9 million. I'm not quite sure. We've spent £11.5 million on him, which is considerably less than uh, what actual Lucas Digne was uh, was was worth. Those are words, sure. I've basically picked him up because I went on the search and I went, find me a wingback. Someone who is naturally has lots of the wingback stats. He has lots of the wingback stats. If we do wingback support, all of them should be pretty high. The only one that isn't is decisions. So I'm happy with Dodo. Hopefully he's going to do a good job and replace Lucas Digne. Next up is a player who is probably a little bit too expensive for what we're actually getting, but it is 21-year-old Swiss winger Ruben Vargas signing from FC Augsburg. Sorry. And uh, yeah, he's come in for like 12, 13 million pounds. It's, it's a lot. We're not paying that all in one lump, but it's a lot of money. Three-star current ability, four-star potential. Sorry, five-star potential. He's still good. He gives us another option as a winger. It does mean that we might need to play the, the winger formation more often than the actual one without wingers because we haven't really shifted on too many of the wingers, but he's only 21. He's very good for a young footballer. 
He's got lots of values in the 13s and 14s, so hopefully if they can just push up by two or three points, he's going to be very, very good for us. The final signing that we have paid money for is Digimon Sidibi. He was here on loan last season, played 34 games, scoring three goals, picking up 14 yellow cards as well. We spent £14 million on him, which is probably too much money. He is our biggest signing in terms of value. I'll come to that in a minute. But yes, £14 million, probably too much, but he's got a season under his belt here. So I'm hoping him joining on a permanent deal doesn't count as like messing up the dynamics too much. Joining the club on loan from Ajax is a player who I think quite a lot of you will probably have heard of. A few of you have probably bought him as well. He is a wonder kid. He is 20 years old. He is a Dutch left back slash central defender called Kik Pieri. Maybe. I think it's Pieri. Formerly of SC Heerenveen, signed for Ajax at the start of last season. I don't know whether that's real life. £3.4 million. We are paying £3.1 million just to loan him for the season, by the way. So Ajax have made their money back. But yeah, Kick is in. He was brought in basically because he can play anywhere. He can be a left back. He can also be a centre back. He can do both jobs, which is ideal because I am tried to sell Mark Michael Keane. Nobody wanted him. Well, actually, that's a lie. Southampton wanted him. Didn't want to pay much money for him. And now for our final signing to be unveiled. I don't know how well it will go down, because considering he's played once in England before, or a few times in England before, but he's definitely played in England wearing the colours of Liverpool, it is Mario Balotelli. Uh, yes, so um, he, he was on a free transfer, so I kind of offered him a trial. They said he's better than all your current strikers. I offered him a contract. £45,000 a week, which is basically half of most of my starting eleven. We, we've signed Mario Balotelli. We've, <laughs> I can't believe I've done that. Honestly, I don't know why I've done it, but he might be playing alongside old uh, Joey Martinez for the majority of the season. It's Mario Balotelli. What have I done? So yeah, that is the transfer business for us for the summer. The window has literally just closed. It closed on the 6th of August at 5pm. You can also see here as well a whole load of players going out on loan. Hansen, Mampala, Gibson, Benning, ben, this guy, he's gone out as well. Uh, Zanluk Leban, Luke Garbert, nope, he's gone out on a free. Rodel Richards, who we've mentioned. Dominic Calvert-Lewin going to Bournemouth, which is quite a big deal. McIntyre and Anderson going out on loan. Iron Zagrova has also gone out on loan, who we've mentioned. Seb Quirk leaving. Anthony Gordon. Seamus Coleman going out on loan to Aston Villa. That's a big deal as well because he's getting paid too much money. They're still paying only half his wages, so he's still getting paid too much money, if I'm perfectly honest. Josh Bowler going to Rotherham. Callum Connolly going to Fleetwood. Joe Virginia, the Portuguese goalkeeper, if I'm not mistaken, has gone to Crawley. And Ryan Astley has gone to Fleetwood. So, yes, a lot of transfer business has happened. And if we look at our scout report for our best 11, in theory, this is what I assume our new assistant manager says. It's Pickford in goal. It's a back three of Keane, Mina and Senesi. Dodo and Giglione are going to be the two wing backs, which is a worry because Sidibe's cost £14 million. Giglione was free. Kabamin and Gomez in the middle. Sigurdsson behind the strike partnership of Joseph Martinez and Mario Balotelli. It's Mario Balotelli. If he scores a goal, I'll be happy. Out of interest, if we change the formation to the 4-3-3, basically, is Pickford in goal. Dodo, Senesi, Keane and Sidibe is the back four. Kbamin, Sigurdsson and Gomez with Bernard, Iwobi and Balotelli. Balotelli's better than Martinez, which is a worry. That's a big worry. He's cost me no money. Martinez has cost me £35 million. And what do the board think of all those transfers, you ask? Well, they're okay. C+. Plus. Some of them they're not great with. Mainly the players leaving the club, but uh, big names, Balotelli and Pieri, board absolutely love them. A plus and A minus for Colin Koosmans because he was on a free transfer, which is always good. Senesi's a B. The fans absolutely love Senesi coming in. He's a great replacement for Ryan Astley. Uh, yeah, I guess. Astley's still good, though. Digital Sidibe, the board aren't particularly happy with because he cost a fair amount of money, which is kind of expected. I knew that when we did it. Uh, transfers out is where we have a problem. So, Sandro leaving. The fans liked Sandro. The fans absolutely hate the fact that dinya has gone. The board are okay with it, because we made a decent amount of money. If we keep going down, the board hate the fact that we sold Fabio Contrell. That's, that's massively affecting our C-plus rating. I don't know why. I don't know why they hate it. Because we should have got more money. He cost us nothing. 
So that's going to do it then for this episode, the first episode of season two with Everton. I'm interested to know what you think of my transfers, because if I'm perfectly honest, there's some transfers there that I'm actually quite excited about. There are some which I'm a bit questionable about, and there are some which I'm just questioning myself as to why I've just signed Mario Balotelli on a free transfer. You can see here we do still have a decent chunk of money to spend come January, 44 and a bit million pounds. We're under our wage budget as well. I do want to try and get our wage budget even lower. If we have a look at the squad, Andre Gomez. Andre Gomez is wanted by Inter. I've loan listed him because he hasn't had a good season. I didn't get on with him at all last season. And he is our highest paid player. If Inter Milan will loan him out for the season and pay most of his wages, I will be happy with that. I tried to shift him on on a permanent deal. Nobody put in any offers. I think the highest offer I got was like £3 million, which is just ridiculous. So yeah, he's probably going to go out on loan as long as people will pay enough of his wages. That's going to do it then for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button and I'll be back later on today with match number one of the season up against Crystal Palace away from home. And let's hope that we can start the season off with a nice easy victory and put us near the top of the table to begin. <laughs>